Hi, and a warm welcome to the session we will have now, how scaling startups attract talent. Uh, so my, my name is uh, Jessica Stark, and um, I have worked a lot within the Swedish startup ecosystem. Uh, for example, as uh, co-founder of the startup hub SAP46. And uh, SAP46 actually stands for Startup People of Sweden. And we use that name since the people behind the startup makes the difference. Uh, so, since I'm really passionate about talents and unleash potential, I recently joined Alumni, which is a leading executive search and leadership consulting firm in the Nordics. And today, I will have a fireside chat with a talent guru, Patrick Hamilton Walsh. So, so a short introduction. I, I want to do a short introduction of you, Patrick. Uh, uh, you are really devoted how to attract and develop talent, and you are now focusing on a solution to attract and develop some of the world's best talent to Stockholm and Sweden. And we thank you for that. And you have, uh, for example, served as head of talent uh, for the city of Stockholm uh, and have over 20 years of domestic and international experience in startups and multinational corporations. So, I mean, it's, it's a really pleasure to have you here today. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> Any, anything you want to add in my introduction of you? I, I think I think the only part I would add to that is that you truly back up what you say. When I came here seven, almost seven years ago as an international talent to the city, you were one of the people that I met in Sub 46 and you were exceptionally kind to me. And I, I remember it was a very busy night within your organization, within your, your, your ecosystem. And you still took a few minutes to sort of make me feel welcome and make me, you know, feel part of the society. And that is so valuable to international talent when they arrive. So I, I always thank you for that. And I, and I always will. Mm, thank you. And I mean, we, we have, we have some, some really exciting questions to, to cover today. And I mean, also with your experience on, on the society level uh, on how to attract and retain talent, we will try to spend also some time on that, but, but more first to be really concrete and dig into more practical aspects of the company level on how to attract talent to, to your team. And uh, from, from, from your experience, what, what are your best advices for startups to be able to attract the best talent possible? To attract the best talent, you're going to have to compete with every other organization on earth. And if you're going to compete, you're going to have to make yourself stand out. And before you can stand out, they have to know you exist. You're a small company and talent, a talented individual is nine times more productive at complex tasks than, than a normal person. And that means that these people can be such a supercharge to a, to a small organization, such as a smart up, startup or a scale up and can provide this productivity supercharge. So they're literally worth their weight in gold to you because you, mm. even though they're worth nine times the output, you won't be paying them nine times the salary. If anything, you may be paying them 20% extra than the other guys. Mm. So the truth is you need to create awareness. They need to know that you exist. And, the, and once they know you exist, the best way to get talent to come is for you to sh share your mission. Mm. And what that means in this world is these millennials and Generation Z talents, what really gets their juices going is that they love to solve problems which lead to a greater good. You know, share your mission, share what you're trying to solve and be honest about it. Don't don't try and hide all your weaknesses and, and oversell yourself as being this perfect place to, to live and work and come to. Share yourself as a place that wants them to come on board and help them solve and, and become part of like the wider, longer journey. Because once these people buy in, they're mm -hmm. all in and they, and, and, and they can actually just change the whole organization's trajectory. Hmm. And I mean, you you say don't oversell, but from from my point of view, I mean, never oversell. But but I also think it's really important to 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 sell. Oh, for sure. I mean, I mean, really have that sell, 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 convince people that you're going somewhere, uh, and and also really find the hook that differs your startup from from a thousand of other of other startups, but. I think in the recruitment process, it's also so important. I mean, not 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 just pick 
which one will I pick? Also think like, really, I need to sell my, my company. It's just, it's a really hard sales process. Yeah. No, I agree with that. What I mean with don't oversell is like, don't tell lies. Don't try and make yourself out yeah. to be bigger and better than you are. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're trying, because they're going to work there, they're going to find out quite quickly what you are and what you're not. Mm -hmm. And actually, what, what we find with talent is if you can tell them actually what you're not, but what we're trying to solve and become, it's, it's a way better sell than trying to make yourself look like perfect. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as you know from, from the great work you do with talent through alumni, mm -hmm. sell your strengths. Like really go all in on your strength and all in the mission that you're trying to achieve. And, and that's the best way to, to, to attract talent and, and also to retain them. And that's the hardest part. Mm. And and here I see a question from Sebastian. How can I make sure the talents know that we we exist? And and also like Mike, you said that be be out there. I mean, have have you any like recommendations? How 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 can you be out there in best way possible? Yeah, thank you, Sebastian, for asking. I I think you just have to turn up. I I have a I have a, I always I think Woody Allen says the best thing you can do for your career and and for for your team is to turn up turn up, turn up, turn up. So I had a baby two weeks ago and I really should not have been at slush the last two days. And, and I felt a bit guilty about it, but from a career perspective and, and, as, and as a family man who's trying to build a grid project, I had to turn up and I had to be on stage and I had to be meeting the mayor and the, you know these various people because over the time of just turning up and making yourself visible and telling people about your product, um, over the years, that actually builds up and, and actually p people start to realize. And, and then when other people are talking to other people about you, mm -hmm. then that, that's how it comes. And, and for me, it's all about putting the energy out there because I think, I think although we have all these great digital tools on, on how to create awareness and all these different things, mm -hmm. a lot of it becomes noise in the end. But people, people don't really remember what I say a lot of the time, but people never forget how I make them feel. Mm. And I always try to leave people feeling something, and and it might be just a small thing. Because I remember how I felt whenever the first time I met Jessica. I don't remember what she said to me, but I remember how she made me feel, and and that's always the way. So I think just turning up and being around, particularly now as things open up, you know, after eighteen months of being closed down, I mm. think you just need to turn up and be around. Yeah, and 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 also one advice from my side. I mean. Also, if you if if you can 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 be an you know expert within your field, I mean you you pick something you you really feel I, I here I can be an expert, yeah. and then it's much easier. I mean also to uh, when when you use social media, secret events, and so on. And I think uh, I think you can to nail your your expert field. Yeah, that's it because that's how you carve out your niche mm. because that's what you're trying to sell anyway is your niche. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I do a lot of stuff where I write. I write a book. I mean, I, I'm an, my background is I'm an accountant and a lawyer. I'm very, very much into the finance world uh, uh, from my from my base. But whenever mm -hmm. I was asked to become the you know the head of t talent for the city of Stockholm, I go all in and I read everything and I become an expert on the field. And one of the best ways for me to become an expert is to write a book about it as well, because it really focuses me to make sure that whatever I put out with this new book called Talent Cities, that it's it, it is the thought leadership. Mm. And and then people want to then when we, when we have panels about talent, people will come to me and they'll come to Jessica because they know that we have been focused on this issue for the longest and we're we really have put our you know our our, our energy and our value into ensuring that we understood talent to the mm. best ability. Mm. And and also one 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 other thought I I have I mean also I mean don't don't feel lonely as a leader in the recruitment process I mean really really. Ask your team to to refer the best people they would love to work with, and I mean include the whole team in in the recruitment by I mean implementing employee referral program. I mean really work 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 as a team when you recruit. And I think the point on to that is make sure that you are a good team to work with. Like yeah. make, because mm. I I love when I meet someone and they say I work in this company and I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it and I love it because of these reasons. And I'm like, wow, like that's like, I don't, you're not even trying to sell it to me, but now I'm interested because I hear so many good, you're literally like your eyes are lighting up. So I think everything must come down to your values, mm. like have really strong, positive values, which you can live by. Because if, if, and if, if it's not, if, if it's not natural to you, it'll, it'll break actually quite naturally. And, and 
so I always try to have a good relationship with myself and with the people around me so that I like going to work and they like working around me. And hopefully then it sort of goes out in ripples so that, it, uh, you know, whenever people are talking about what do you do, they're going, I, I work with this, th these great people and this great team and there's a really good vibe and they care about me. Yeah. You know, how was your weekend? And uh, how was, not just how was your weekend, but how was the concert with Avicii at the weekend? Or, you know, something which is actually, I was listening to you on Friday when I asked you, and now I'm following back up, and I actually care about you as a human and not just as someone who can produce code. Mm. Mm. And um, if, if we go to, I mean, what's, what's your point of view on the balance between using external recruiters uh, versus internal ones in the recruitment process? Do you have any, any thoughts on that? I, I, I have a lot of thoughts. I mm. think the best advertisement you can get is word of mouth, just what we're talking about now. When someone mm. internally, and you said it, Jessica, like you have your team recommending all the people that they had worked to in the past, and they're saying, you, you should come and work with us. That's probably the the most simple and cheapest and obviously easiest way is word of mouth. But I really think because we're living in such a global society now and the skill set is becoming so so specified um, when it comes to some of these like deep tech and AI and you know health tech sort of pro projects that teams are working on, you probably don't have enough mass just by the, relying on word of mouth. So like using organizations such as alumni with their global reach where they have sort of connections all around the world where th they're also aware of talent that are m maybe not available but could become available for the right project if you know if it, if it falls in, in alignment with their values and things like that so i i think you have to depend on both um because the world is so specialized and these projects are becoming so cluster based that you really want people who can come in and get up to speed and okay. so I think internal is obviously the easiest and best one, I think, but you cannot just re rely on it. You have to you have to talk to teams like alumni and stuff and have, you know, that that at least city reach, national reach, international reach. Hmm. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, <laughs> since, since I'm now working at the alumni, I mean, it, it's also it's, it's really it's really, I mean, hard work with the recruitment process. I mean, from from start to 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 have you have signed the the candidate so so i mean i, I think if if you if you will do it yourself uh you need to really spend a lot of time uh on the process i mean from from sourcing and hopefully you 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 can you can get a lot of referrals but i mean take the the people through through the whole recruitment process and i mean also i mean what, what do you say about like be, being nice and 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 the, the the employment brand and 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 also I think really really respond to all people within the process. I mean it's so so important not to to forget that that part because that would not be be good for your company if you don't come back to to people because you never know when they will come back. Exactly, and the world is small as well. Yeah. Yeah. And and if I mean now now we were like talked about um, uh, to to find uh, attract uh, top talents, but but I mean something else. I mean to to be able to retain great people. I mean that's really important and and also uh, a hard hard work. I, I mean, have have you any any recommendations there? This is the, this is the biggest part of it all. So this is my biggest challenge working both for the city of Stockholm in general and trying to advise teams and projects about how to manage talent. So just to give you statistics coming out of the Stockholm Academic Forum, they bring in a lot of uh, international academic talent and you know people around universities and stuff. And this is the body that covers all, all of Sweden. And they said that 81% of talent in the city at the moment is considering leaving because their spouse is not settled. That's four mm. out of five people that they have spent so much effort bringing in and sort of setting up yeah. that are, are leaving. And it's such a negative return on investment if we're losing good talent. And and to the extra, I, I, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm about to publish a book called Talent Cities. And it's about the eight A's of talent mobility. And f the four middle ones are all about retention. And, and just, mm. just because we're talking about retention, I'll, I'll actually tell you, the accept, accommodate, assimilate, and advance. They're the four ways to retain talent for longer. 
and accept is as simple as this. It's about accepting people and really understanding that first impressions matter. When you come into a team, people want to be seen. They want to they want to be given a warm welcome. They want to feel important. Like we're, we're ex you've joined us. We're excited to have you. Mm. And they're like, wow, these people care. And they've you know, first impressions matter. So that's acceptance. Second thing is accommodate. That's all about your onboarding process. What do you do to bring? I have some nightmare stories about onboarding. Just even myself, you know, weird things going on where people bring you in. Oh, you've have you got a desk? Or they, everyone ignores you? You leave you standing at the reception or something like that. The onboarding's terrible, and you can't get set up. So accept, accommodate, assimilate. And and I, if we just stop there, I mean, what's a really great onboarding process? A really great onboarding process is one where it. It, it feels like they have put in the effort before you arrived and they have tried to understand your needs and requirements. And, you know, you come in and maybe you have a desk allocated and the person is already waiting for you at the reception and you get your your, your documents and your keyboard, you know, your, your, your access keys and stuff like that. And it, and it probably is presented to you in such a nice way. And they're like, wow, these people have put an effort. Like they, somebody has got up 30 minutes and come into the office earlier to be here for me. Mm. And, and they really were waiting for me and they, and, and they make me feel as if I belong and that they're excited to have me. That's that's what a really efficient onboarding. Pro and you're, it's not as if like your email address is ready. you you know, you have your access to the printer. Like everything is just smooth and it's ready to go. And it's like you were already there for two years mm. as opposed to situations where I, I worked for an organization where they wouldn't give me a laptop for nine months even though i needed a laptop to do my <laughs> sheet and it was just, i don't know what weird games we were playing but you like when you're in an organization where you need a laptop to sign off on your timesheet because you need the keys to get into the system mm. you won't get and they won't give you one they, i mean that's a that's i never really got onboarded at all <laughs> you know so I, I i i just need to mention i mean my onboarding process are here at alumni uh, i got uh, flowers sent home to me um uh, the day before I, I wow. started, yeah. Wow. And it, I mean, it was, it, it meant so much to, to, to get those flowers. And it made me proud of alumni before I, I mean, even, even started. But can I, can, like as someone who talks about talent, the fact that they did that and I now have a use case, like that sets a new standard for me. So when people go, what's good? What's a good onboarding? I'll be like, well, in alumni, they sent Jessica flowers the day before. On Sunday, she was sitting at home in her pajamas, chilling out, getting ready for the next day, and she got a bunch of flowers. Mm. And she's like, I can't wait to go on to work tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's ex that's a great example. And of course, you know, Magnus and the, the guys are rock stars anyway. They're just good humans, and that's their values coming through. Uh, I, I see a question here from Bart. Do men also get flowers? Uh, I think all, all, all people at Alumni get, get, get flowers. When, I love when flowers. Yeah. Because we have a new baby, I've got loads of bunches of flowers the last few weeks, and I love them. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, sorry, yeah, continue with. Uh, to, so that, to so the, the third, mm -hmm. third of, of the, so there's eight in total, and it's eight. the first one is awareness, making people know you exist. But from the from the retention perspective, I've talked about acceptance and accommodation, and then the third one is uh, assimilate, and that's about when people join your team. Let's say it's a guy who comes in from Bangalore in India, you have to assimilate him. It's not just about integration; it's about assimilate. Like literally, just going here's your desk. You've been integrated into the team. Assimilation is the next level where you actually have mutual respect. You know, if it's Indian National Day, you're like, hey, bro, like, you know, where we're having a Indian themed fika or, you know, something like that. Or you, you actually care about where they came from and you ask them questions. It's not like we're, we're all over here, at the, you know, at the um, coffee, you know, doc talking about the ice hockey last night. And, and the guy from India and the guy from Australia are sort of sitting on their own working away. They have never been assimilated. If, if people don't feel assimilated and part of it, they're not going to hang around because they'll find a place where people do care about them. And then the fourth one is advance. If you're joining the team, one of the big things that talent expect is they want to be advanced. If they come to your team for two to three to four years, they want to leave there on a lot more sharper, more educated, more higher level. They want to have seen a development phase and a growth phase throughout their, throughout their career within your organization. And the more they're, they, they will, if they're worth their salt, they will be saying, well, what's, what's, what's in this for me? You know, I'm staying here. There's other teams looking for me. 
Mm. What, what, how do you see me developing during these years and what are you doing to make sure that I do develop and advance? So when, when we talk about retention, there's, there's eight A's across the whole process of talent, you know, mobility. But when it comes to retention, those four are keys, accept, accommodate, assimilate and advance. Mm. And the book will be out in January or February. Um, so obviously I can, I can talk more about that then but through me and Jesse you can do another process or something then. Mm. And um, do, do you have any like favorite companies you want to, to highlight? I mean, can be in Sweden or abroad. I mean, who, who, who you think are outstanding to, to both, both attract and retain talent or attract or retain? Yeah, I think in Sweden, I think we have, I think we're doing a really good job with, with the famous companies. You know, they're, they're really, when you look at your Spotify's and those guys, they're really doing a, a good job in creating awareness for themselves. Everyone knows Spotify exists, for example, but it's not just that. When people come in, there's, there's a real big um, buy-in to the brand and how people are treated when they're there. And there, there's a lot of love for, for people who come into those. But when I look at smaller sort of scale-ups and you know what, mm. what we're talking about here, startups, mm. my wife works for a company called Mindler. Mm. Um, it's only, it, it's probably like up to 50 people now, but when she joined, it might've been 15, like two years ago. And they are so kind. Like they have, they have given their, they, they care about their staff. They have really good onboarding process. Like my wife really has seen herself grow and develop. She's seen, she's been able to build a team around herself, grow and develop. She felt she didn't get flowers. So that's a new standard, <laughs> but she really feels seen and heard within that, pro, within that sort of project that they're building. And of course it's a mission based project as well. It's about helping people deal with their mental health a lot easier, you know, through like, it's all like, you know, online talking to psychologists and things like that. So the mission is really strong within Mindler, but how they treat their team as well is, is super strong. And, and that matters and it matters to my wife and it matters to the, the great people that work around her. Like I almost feel part of that team because mm -hmm. I know so many people within there, you know, so well, and they're, they're so supportive even of me as, as being Johanna's husband. Mm. And, and also, I mean, we, we need also to, to talk a little bit about, I mean, if we move to, to a society level and look deeper into Stockholm and Sweden, uh, because I mean, now you're focusing on a solution to, to attract and develop some of the world's best talent to Stockholm and Sweden. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit more, more about your, your, your project, anything you can, can highlight? Yeah, of course. So I'm, we're doing a project called Sweden Talent Foundation and we're trying, the vision that I have is I'm trying to make Sweden and, and Stockholm particularly the global center of talent mobility. My belief, which is sort of different from some of the guys I'm working with, they want to create Stockholm as a hub. You know for talent and i said that's great if you can get talent to come and create a hub that's fantastic but it's not 2008 mm. talent will are mobile and they will move and they will if we can attract them to come here and to work on great projects and to contribute to you know the society with really you know let's say they come into uh, mindler as, as i mentioned earlier and they work on you know for three to five years on making you know people's mental health better through through technology and stuff then they have, we have won because we've been able to attract them for a while. It's not realistic that these talent are going to come and stay forever mm. because they will find cool projects in cool cities around the world that are appealing to them. And if they stay for long term, that's awesome. But mm. the reality is these people will jump around because, because they have so many opportunities all around the world and there's so many cool projects happening around the world. Mm. Um, so I would, like, I would like us to have a conveyor belt of the best talent from around the world coming here just for a few years. They stay longer, that's a bonus. Uh, but I'm just trying to be realistic, talking as an international talent. And, talk, and and I think the other side of that is, I want young Swedish talent, I want Swedish talent of all ages to go out and work in projects all around the world as well, but I want them to come back. That's the yeah. thing. Because mm. whenever they go out to London or Silicon Valley or Singapore, they become more rounded and more you know global in their mindset. Mm. And when, then when they come back to Sweden, they're, they're more valuable to us. Yeah, sure. You know, sure. And, and just to put a statistic on that, for every 25 international students that graduate from Swedish universities and spend one year working in Sweden after graduation, just one year, 
that's worth 2.6 million euros to society. Now, let me let me make this a little bit more yep. realistic. Yes. Mm-hmm. For every, if, we don't have 25 international students in Stockholm or Sweden. Mm-hmm. What we have is probably closer to 25,000. And that makes it 2.6 billion euros. And that's just in their first year after graduation. So imagine what these talents are worth in 10 years' time, whenever they're executive level. And, and so one of the, whenever I joined the city as, a, as the head of talent, we can only keep talent for six months, and which was completely crazy because in Sweden, we, we pay for everyone to have free education. We give them world-class you know, experience mm-hmm. and all that. And then we would send them back to Ireland and Spain and everywhere else and be like, okay, your time's up, off you go. <laughs> which makes no sense whenever they can be so valuable to our society. And of course, these people came here when they were 18 or 19. Mm-hmm. So they, I mean, they've grown up here basically as adults and they love, but we have to send them away because their visas are up. It makes mm-hmm. no sense. Mm-hmm. So it's now been increased to one year and I'm trying to lobby to get that increased to three years. Mm-hmm. So that we're not throwing good people away who actually love the society and want to find work here. So, yeah. uh, so th- th- that's I think that's where we are at the moment on that. Mm, really exciting. So, but but how how do you see we stand in the global competition? Uh, if if you would like do a SWOT analysis on on Sweden compared to 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 other countries. So, just I'm I'm coming here as an immigrant, seven years. Uh, I have been to 140 countries. I have a lot of reference cases. I'm not I'm not talking as a guy who went from a farm small village in Ireland to, you know, Stockholm. I'm talking as a guy who's been around the world, all seven continents. Mm. I think I think Sweden and particularly Stockholm are best in class in so many regards. I, I and I and I talk about this quite a lot when I'm presenting. I think that Sweden and against Stockholm, if they were luxury brands they would be considered at the very top people care about what stockholm does people care about what sweden does and i'm saying this as an immigrant when i was head of talent for the city of stockholm the thing i loved most about that role is that everyone wanted to meet me everyone wanted everyone was interested in what we were doing next so it's a, sweden as a brand is up there like louis vuitton it's up there like you know aston martin people care about it so the strength is it's got such a there's such a warm feeling historically about it but, but to make it more realistic is that the organizations here are fantastic to work in. You know, that low, uh, I, I don't I, I don't sort of buy the whole low sort of hierarchy of organization. I think it's more of an inverted pyramid. You know, mm. people here can question the management. I think there's, there's, they're quite hierarchical, but I think you can still question the CEO and ask them questions and go, why? Yeah. Like, why are you doing that? And also when you're at meetings, you can speak up at the table, which is not always the case for German organizations or Dutch or French. You know, you're, you're just supposed to sit there and be quiet. So I think and also too, Swedes are building great projects. There's really cool stuff happening within the city, and these projects go global a lot of the time. So there is that attractiveness from a strength perspective. But the thing that international talent loves most about Sweden, from the research and the, and the questionnaires I've done, is that they love the nature. I love. I live at Pampas Marina. Twelve minutes by bike into this epicenter. I see deer, rabbits, foxes. Badgers. I live beside the water. I live in a. I live like the Vesterskogen in the Western Forest. It's amazing, and that is actually the number one thing that um, the talent love about about living in a city like Stockholm. Believe it or not, from a weaknesses perspective, I think the, uh, just looking at the retention levels, I've, I've sort of talked on it. Four out of five international talents in the city are thinking about leaving, and it's because they're not. Uh, the first impressions aren't great when you join the teams, mostly. From my experience, like a lot of the time, I've just been left standing at the door and stuff like that, and, and it's a thing that it, that a lot of people have said, like they haven't really put effort into the, the the first impression or the onboarding level. And again, for various obvious reasons, people want to talk about the things they're talking about, the assimilation within the organisations here, you know, the, the, that mutual respect and sort of showing interest in the guy who's just come from Pakistan, and sort of in, including him a bit more is is a bit is leaking here. The thing that frustrates international talent the most is the social system. It's the number one biggest complaint we have, and, and, and even myself as well. And it's it, by far it's the thing that frustrates us. Swedes are always being told how great their social system is, and it probably is if you're a Swede. But don't forget, international talent. We're not we're not going to retire here. We're young, healthy, fit people. We're not getting sick. We're not exposed. We're not getting exposed to the to the social to the social system because mm-hmm. of our age and demographic. 
Mm. However, we're paying for everyone else to get access to it. Mm. You know, and that's a frustration for a lot of people who can make a lot more money in other places. So it's quite a weird one, and it's one that Swedes are not sort of used to hearing. Mm. The opportunity that Sweden has is it's such an open society. Sweden is amazing. Like I believe Sweden is the the global zeitgeist. It's the place where the rest of the world is trying to become more like. And um, people here, there is a place for you. But at the same time, the way uh, the way a lot of international talent makes complaints, I think it's a lot of the emphasis is on the talent as well to meet the Swedes halfway. It's not about it's not about you, them coming over and saying, "Well, how was the cricket last night?" It's about you showing interest in the ice hockey and trying to get assimilated yourself into the society. The mm. emphasis isn't always just on the people who who brought you here. You have also decided to come here, and, mm. and that's what I have done. And this is why I have been successful within the society because I. I meet the people halfway, if not more, and and I try to make sure that I'm there. I, and I think the other big opportunities is it truly is the best place on earth when it comes to being a, a woman or, or or having a young family. Like there, there genuinely is a situation where if you're, um, if I'm a man, say if I was to leave this meeting now and say I have to go home, guys, because uh, I've got a small baby and I have, to, it, it would be no problem. It, like it wouldn't even be a question. It would just okay, you go. And we'll continue the meeting. In Ireland, we say that as well. No, I haven't. I haven't lived in Ireland for fifteen years, but I remember they used to say all the same things. But when guys would leave to go to get their kids or whatever, they'd be like, you know, let's see, 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 leaving again. To, you know that type of attitude. Like, you mm. know, it's not. It's it, front page. Yeah, go do it. But behind the scenes, they're questioning why you're doing it. I think in Sweden, the that's the best thing is the opportunity is. They truly, it's the number one place for to have a a, a working man or woman with a family. Yeah. And that really makes a big difference to people. Patrick, I, I, I just, I, th- 30 minutes, it, it really uh, flies. And I see it's now uh, 32. Uh, so, so but, but, but I mean, the, the, um, the strength and the opportunities, I mean, if you can summarize, I mean, can, can you see how, how, I mean, startup companies really can, can use uh, the strength and the opportunities within their marketing? What, what do you think is most best to, to highlight? I, I think the most important thing to do is to be true to the values of your organization and to your society. This is this is a great family based society and it gives and that will appeal to uh, a certain demographic of people. When I was in the city, I decided that I wasn't going to aim for lifestyle. I was going to aim for life stage. And we're going to attract people who was in a stage of their. It was easier for us to attract people at a certain stage who would value um, coming here, you know, and working in an organization with the inverted pyramid, with the family opportunities and all that. And I would really be selling those values that are actually already built into the Swedish system and, and built into the Swedish psyche uh, as a way to attract the best talent, but also to retain them and say like, okay, you're 26 now, but what happens when you're 29, 30 and you're thinking oh. about having a family? Do you really want to live in Texas? At that stage, probably not. You're probably going to bounce back here. So if you want to do two years, go away. But we're ready to sort of onboard you again in two years with a nice bunch of flowers like they do in alumni. Yeah. So so what will happen now um, for for people who have time to to ask more <laughs> questions to, to both of us? Um, now we will go to upstart.com slash Q&A. Um, it's a, a, a 2D hangout. Uh, so, so just click on, on the pinned message from Alexandra and we, we will move to, to, to that world. So um, see you soon <laughs> in you the so hangout. And thank you so much, Patrick. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. You're a true inspiration. Thanks, Jessica. And, and keep up the good good work. I'm 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 so excited to see what will be happening uh, within the talent uh, sphere here now in 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 Stockholm. That's great. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks for having me, and I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. See See you soon uh, in the hangout space. On my way there.